So it's uh, great to be here. Uh, I just want to start by saying Austin rocks. Um, I think this is the best, consistently the best DevOps days uh, on the planet, and uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, and of course, it doesn't, doesn't hurt when they butter you up as a speaker by putting your name on a t-shirt. Uh, it's probably the one thing that I've done in this DevOps thing my kids think is actually cool. So uh, thank you for, for all of that and all the hospitality. Um, so, you know, I think the core thing has to kind of retrospect. Think about well, what's, what's going on here. And there's this interesting thing, which is, you know, after 13 years of DevOps, right? I think I got that math right. Uh, we're still asking this question, but what is DevOps, right? We talk to different people, they have different definitions and different ideas and different, uh, has it been successful, has it not been successful? And, you know, if you think about how can there be so many valid, valid definitions, right? And, uh, you know, a smatter of the ones that I really like, and Hermes talked about his uh, yesterday, uh, and I thought, you know, uh, Adam Jacob really, I think, kind of nailed it when he talked about this cultural and professional movement focused on how we build and operate high-velocity organizations born from the experiences of its practitioners, right? And I think he was kind of dancing around the main point, the thing that's kind of the aha moment for me looking back at what, what's been going on. It's this idea that it's a, a movement, right? It's a cultural, professional movement. Um, and it's born of the experiences of, their pract of his practitioners. Which actually, if you put something that Charity Majors is, has said over the years that now suddenly rings very true, is DevOps itself is open source, right? It's, it's really, and I look at it as, you know, DevOps is actually an open source movement, right? Not a movement about open source, not a community around a project, but the thing itself, the, 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 the value of what we built is uh, the movement itself, right? And, you know, DevOps days, I believe, is the soul. It's the soul of this movement, it's what keeps it, so it keeps it moving forward, and it's what has created the, the it's funny, it's that the lack of structure is actually, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's structure. And I think the, the main, uh, one of the most critical decisions, I think, that Patrick made early on, I'll talk about the history uh, in a moment, is this incorporation of open space, right? And actually, the founder of open space, calls it, uh, a guy named Harrison Owen back in the, in the, in the early 80s, uh, he calls it open space technology, right? And uh, this idea is almost like little ad hoc open source communities, right? We sit around, we, uh, you know, whatever the people bring with them and decide to talk about is what actually we talk about, this whole set of principles here. And that really defines, um, it's the same principles of what happens in successful open source community. So you think about these principles of open space technology, whatever it starts is the right time, whatever it comes, or whoever comes are the right people, whatever happens is the only thing that could have happened, and whenever it's over, it's over, right? We said these time and time again at every DevOps days around, around the world, and it's kind of trained our community. We've, we've put enough structure in here to say, you know, bring your ideas, that's the morning sessions, right? And then we sit in circles and we talk in the afternoon, and these principles take take effect. I think that has sort of programmed our community and has built this global, scalable, truly open source uh, open source movement. So you know, and in, in, to me, what we've built here is uh, really is that it's an open source an open source movement, and the open space technology really is the framework for what we've uh, done. So I kind of want to like talk about some of what I, I, I've uh, my journey and look at it from the point of view of um, these principles, right? First one, whenever it starts, right, uh, is the right time, right? And think about everyone's journeys, right, are different. There's people now, I mean, there's people now I've seen that have, you know, DevOps evangelist jobs, right? And they've been in technology shorter amount of time than DevOps has been, has been around, right? So people are, some people are here the first time, just figuring out what is this thing. Some people are coming because they're boss them, right? And so it was, everyone's history starts at the right time, at the moment that they that they uh, that they show up. But if you go back to the, the beginning, I have a full video on this. If you Google uh, my name and history of DevOps, um, you think about kind of how this all came about, right? So it started in Belgium, right? This guy named Patrick, there he is, right there. <laughs> there he is, right there. He was working in these different jobs, right? He had this idea, almost like in baseball, sort of going the full rotation. He wanted to do every job in IT, right? That was, that was his thing. So he was doing every job in IT as a as a, as a consultant. And uh, he was working for a bank, because you know, they have money. And uh, they were doing a big data center migration, I believe it was, right? And so he'd spend half his time uh, sitting over with the dev folks, right? How cool and agile things are going, and then half the time with the hair on fire ops folks, right? And he's getting this real kind of cognitive dissonance between these two 
groups and said, why is this? Why are things so different in these two different parts of the world when this is really one set of work? We have to get together and figure this out. So, you know, all these different threads were going on at the same time, right? And one of them was uh, the Agile uh, uh, 2008 conference. Uh, Andrew Schaefer posted on the birds of a feather kind of board or uh, whatever it is that he's looking to talk about Agile infrastructure, right? And um, only one person showed up, it's Patrick. But guess what, even Andrew didn't show up, right? So there's kind of this missed, missed connection there. But they didn't start this, uh, this mailing group, right? Addison's administration, not really a whole lot happened, uh, happened from it, right? But there was you know, some people on there. And then flash forward to uh, the Velocity Conference in 2009, where they were trying to talk about web scale operations, right? And uh, John Allspaugh and Paul Hammond did this really amazing presentation, which they just stood there on stage and talked about how they did 10 deploys a day at Flickr, right? Devinoff's cooperation. And you know, as Gene Kim says, that was like, you know, there's people puking in the aisles and screaming, no, this can't possibly be, and maybe it didn't really happen that way, but it was so novel that these two folks who, who should be at each other's throats are standing there like they're standing in a bar talking about, you know, uh, their, their adventures and how they're getting this amazing performance. Patrick saw this uh, video later on, right? And said, well, you know, how does this possibly happen, right? Usually if a developer and an operations person showed up at the same conference, one of them is in the wrong place, right? Um, and, you know, Paul Nazareth said, hey, why don't you start one of these conferences, right? And so Patrick did, right? So, uh, you know, in his kind of Germanic naming style, he said there's gonna be dev, there's gonna be ops, it's gonna be two days long, let's call it dev, let's push it together, right? Let's call it dev ops days, right? And all these people came, and a uh, lovely bunch of folks, if you, uh, if you know who, uh, who some of them, who some of them are, again, it's kind of because let that spark of, yeah, why is that? Why is this collision? At the same time, we had infrastructure as code going on, continuous delivery was starting, like all these other things were there, but kind of Patrick sort of pulled it together by defining this core, this core conflict of why don't we get together and solve our problems? Uh, it all moved to Twitter after the, after, the, after the event, like Patrick said, he thought that was gonna be a one and done kind of thing. But you know, on Twitter, those extra you know four characters, it's a lot of space, right? So everybody locked off the days and just hashtag DevOps was born. So you know, no central structure, no kind of you know uh, uh, ongoing idea other than a community of like-minded people, uh, you know, shared a vision and wanted to wanted to or thought they were sharing a vision and wanted to talk about it, right? And that's fun, Gantz. And then Lindsey Holman said, "I'm going to do one in Sydney." And then John Willis came back and got myself and Andrew Schaefer, so let's do one in. In Mountain View, right? And it kind of went on from there. We started to record content, and people, more people started, you know, tagging their content. Hashtag, hashtag DevOps. It's anything related to these areas. Uh, people started singing songs about it. That's where the cultural part of it took over. Like, there's this real pent up demand to talk about this problem. Uh, and all the tools came about, right? Crazy names like Rundeck and Juju and Funk and you know, Vagrant, right? That was the, uh, you know, Mitchell Hashimoto's thing before, uh, you know, the rest of the hashing court, right? All these cobbler, crowbar, you know, we're, we're, uh, uh, our friend Rob over there. Then the analyst got involved, or at least at that point, Cote thought he was an analyst, I think he had an identity crisis on a regular, on a regular <laughs> basis, it goes back and forth, but they started talking about it, and this fateful moment happened, which was Cameron Haight um, in March uh, 2011, we can trace a lot of interest back to this presentation, a lot of big enterprises looked at Gartner, said, hey, um, you know, ITIL has been a problem, which we never thought of DevOps and ITIL even like what? But he, he in, his, in his mind, his, he brought to the movement was saying, hey, there's this old way of thinking and organizing our work. This new DevOps thing is about that, and this is something we have to pay attention to. Then the enterprise has caught on, and then, you know, it's kind of grew from, from there. You know, we tried to define, John Wills and I tried to define, well, what is the general themes? So and the open spaces idea, I didn't realize we were really doing that at the time, but you know, you kind of enter with a theme, all right? And then whatever happens, happens, right? And, you know, so just looking at, well, what makes the difference of a DevOps conversation? You know, what is the theme? It's always around that culture, automation, measurement, sharing, around that kind of core DevOps uh, conflict. Then the data scientists showed up, Nicole Forsgren started working with, you know, Puppet Labs and other folks, IT Revolution, to say, hey, let's, you know, there's actual science behind this. Let's take what we learned in other, in other industries and apply it to, uh, what we've learned here. And then, you know, this, this kind of funny thing happened, which we built enough, uh, I think, structure, kind of must ceremony, right? That what makes a DevOps day? Well, it's generally talks in the mornings, the open spaces in the afternoon, um, you know, sponsors should be participants, uh, you know, the open call for papers, the whole idea. And it was just enough 
formality to where this could be a repeatable thing. And it's really spread throughout the world. The fascinating thing about it is there is no such thing as DevOps days, right? It's not, there's no company, there's no real organization. It's a mailing list and a Twitter group and a sort of collection of norms and uh, you know people's belief in a common, a common or their version of a common, a common vision, which effectively is, is exactly like an open source project. What is an open source project, right? It's a mailing list and a bunch of people that share some norms and share some ideas, and you can bring your own ideas, and they might get rejected by the group, right? Or they might be they'd be accepted by the group, or they might have factions within the group. But effectively, you know, this is spread in that exact uh, same ways. And also like an open source project, there's been this sort of downstream impact, right? Where it's not like, uh, this is not like a forking, but I'd say it's more like a, let's consume that, let's build value on top of it, right? And then we see sort of the whole DevOps enterprise movement, which is saying, let's take these core truths and uh, let's, yes and, let's build on top of those. Let's, let's take those and package them and, and you know, build uh, support structure around it that we need to do this kind of at large, uh, large scales. So another, and that's kind of the end of my, most of my slide stuff here, but <laughs> I'll just talk for now. Uh, you know, this idea of whoever comes, you know, is the is the right people. It's a, it's a fascinating one. If you think about how this started, uh, it was a lot of counterculture. It's kind of a lot of renegades, right? It was the people that were upset about how, how things were currently working. Uh, a lot of people gave their free time. So in the early days, a lot of the DevOps days were a Friday, Saturday thing. Why? Because nobody's boss would give them more than one day off, right? So people gave up kind of come on a Saturday to keep talking about this stuff, right? It seems funny now, now everyone's bosses, you gotta go to this and learn and do these things. But, you know, it was very much, and the idea of appealing to authority, right? And kind of that, you know, logical fallacy just never happened because it was it was about authority had it wrong, right? The people telling us this is what dev does, this is what ops does, this is how these things are supposed to work together. Uh, people are fundamentally saying this is wrong, there's a better way, we don't know what it is yet, but we're gonna figure it out, right? Um, so that was, uh, and then now you, you fast forward to where, <coughs> It's kind of like the old, the old saying about the hippies, you know, they, they, you know, you rail against the man long enough and then suddenly you become the man, right? And you see now there's VPs of DevOps, right? And it's like we've become the structure, right? And uh, now you have a whole different set of people coming to these, to these events, but it's all valid, right? And I think that's the thing that if you think about, you know, oh, DevOps must be this one thing, uh, you know, it's always the, the, the uh, I think it happened a lot in the early days, I think everybody settled down when you realize that you know it's a movement trying to get it to a better to a better place, and you know I think the the, the inclusion that's been built in this community has been a very positive uh, positive thing. And then uh, whatever happens is the only thing that can, that, can, that could right. I think this was a big. If you look back, you realize that you know there was these arguments of like is DevOps or a job title right? Can it be a job title? And you know there's pros and cons in that right. Uh, pros being like that, hey, you know, it l allows people to have a career path. It lets people identify this is what my job is going to is going to be. There's cons, which is, wait a minute, aren't you just making another silo, right? How can you make collaboration a third party's job, <laughs> right? It just doesn't, you know, it doesn't seem to make to make a lot of sense. But you know, we all kind of got to a better place, um, and I think accepting that has been a big part of this community's ongoing growth, right? That whatever could have happened is what's is what's gonna happen. And I think it also believes what do people want to get out of this, right? Uh, I built and sold a software company, right? That was important to me. You know, uh, uh, Rob, you know, software has been fighting this infrastructure as code battle, right? You've got folks like my good podcasting buddy, John Willis, who he's decided he cares a lot about burnout and, and, and human beings and, and how that works, organizational structure, right? And so you get different folks that want different things out of this. And I think the, if you accept it as an open source community, it's, you know, it's a highly valid, uh, valid option. And it's funny because I remember Gene Kim introduced me to some of the early um, Agile uh, folks, actually two different folks that actually signed the Agile manifesto, right? And in the early days of Dallas, he's like, oh, talk to them. And I talked to them and I explained what we're doing and they kind of, mm -hmm. they both had the same reaction. It was kind of like, I, I liked your idealism. And like, almost like, oh, that's cute, pat, pat, pat a kid on the head, right? And they're just like, yeah, we tried that. Didn't really work, right? I'm like, what do you mean? Agile's everywhere. And they're like, yeah, but we had, what DevOps is today was the dream we had when we signed that Agile Manifesto, and instead it just became Scrum, which was not what we wanted. And I'm like, yeah, but don't you have like a big Scrum business? <laughs> and like, aren't you very successful? And they're like, yeah. But it wasn't what they all, you know, to them it wasn't what they saw as like what they wanted out of that, out of it, because then it was a very specific thing. And I think that what that's been different from the DevOps movement is that, you know, there was this avoidance of a manifesto, right? And I think that a lot of people annoyed them. 
right? Is it, you know, the, where, this is the hard definition. Where is the hard, where is the DevOps manifesto, right? Whereas the reality is, I think avoiding that has actually allowed this to flourish and to evolve with the times and allow people to get out whatever they whatever they want to put in, right? And you look at people's personal journeys, um, you know, where they started, where they're going from, what they wanted out of the community. Uh, and there's one thing I think that's been consistent, which is what you put in is somehow magically what you get out, right? And I, I've yet to see people who haven't invested in the community, invested in the relationships, um, invested in the knowledge and share the knowledge um, that haven't got out as much or more that they, um, that they, that they put in. And then I think an important one is when it's over, it's over, right? I mean, that's a, that whole, you know, for some of the people in the early days, right, it's kind of like the old Yogi Berra quote, like, nobody goes there anymore, it's too crowded, right? You know, it's like you think about it, some people, like, it's kind of, it ran its course, you know, um, uh, you know, Gildas Lenata, right? If I didn't say his last name right. He was instrumental in helping kind of bridge the gap from the Europeans, well, along with Chris Beider, right? From the Europeans to the US folks, so we were kind of driving all this enthusiasm and creating structure. And then he decided, you know what, I'm done. I have some jobs I want to do. He moved to Australia. Like, I haven't seen Gildas in years, right? I know he's out there, but it's like, you know, for him, he was such a core part of it, and then he decided for him personally, it was over, right? And other folks we find continuous with things. And I think the greatest example of this is Patrick himself, right? Um, you know, put all this effort, all this time rallying us around this thing, and then decided, you know what, his personal journey as being sort of the kind of the, 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 the head wrangler of, of all of this was over. Right, and so he, he, in kind of an emotional, you know, way for all of us, he handed it off to to Bridget, right? And you would think, oh, well, there you go, project founder is left, right? It's all gonna, it's all gonna go to hell, right? And you know, yet things have just continued to skyrocket from uh, from there. Again, I, you know, I'm not going to speak for you, Patrick, but I feel like you put a tremendous amount into it, got a tremendous amount out, but you had solved your personal journey, right? And and now, uh, you know, it's time for other people to solve their personal journey. Now, Matt Stratton has taken over this. This responsibility and again it's all this responsibility and work and there's no pay there's no company backing you up it's just people to get together and decide to solve these uh, uh, these problems and you know I, I think this also kind of is leads to you know sort of the where again there's the four principles and the one law right of open spaces and the law of two feet right if any time you're neither learning nor contributing then you have the responsibility to get up and move on right and I think that's this renewal that you see in the DevOps uh, the DevOps Days community, which again I believe is the soul of the you know, DevOps movement itself, and it's crazy to see you know that enthusiasm is still I think on the upswing. You know you watch CNBC, uh, the big you know financial news here in, in the uh, in the U.S. and you know you hear the anchor saying the word DevOps, right? It's, it's crazy, right? So to think back to where we started with a bunch of kind of countercultural renegade people annoyed at how things work, couldn't get their boss to even give them you know a second day off to come here. To where now this entire industry is, they're all everyone's trying to get that sort of DevOps, uh, that DevOps magic. And I think truly like an open source thing, I guess prove my thesis of when the excuse me, uh, DevOps days is an open source uh, uh, movement, or DevOps open source movement, DevOps days being the, the soul of it. No one's really figured out how to directly monetize it, like like open source projects, right? You can't directly monetize the project, you gotta do stuff around it. How many vendors have tried, and uh, you know, no one's been able to successfully do it. But everybody wants to be part of the community. You know, pulls people back into being good citizens in the community because this is, you know, a true open source, uh, open source movement. So that is uh, kind of what I wanted to share. Um, I encourage all of you to, you know, whether you're at the beginning of your journey or the end of your journey, um, you know, remember wherever it starts, it's the right time. Whoever comes with the right people, whatever happens, the only thing that could have happened. And we owe it to ourselves to, you know, use the law of two feet because uh, when it's over, it's uh, it's over. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, again, that's awesome. Thank you all.